Hi, it's Guilherme. This is the second part of our puzzle game prototype series. And in this part, we are going to create our grid-based box. If you haven't watched part one yet, please do so. And without further ado, let's get started with our box. To create the behavior of our grid-based box, we are going to use our tile map, which in this scene is called level. This way we can determine how much the box should move without having to set it manually on our box script. This means that if you are using a tile map that has a different size, this should work probably without any changes. And it's also a less error-prone approach. Let's begin by creating the scene for our grid-based box. So click on scene, new inherited scene. Let's navigate to our word folder instead of props. We're going to find our box scene, so we can double click it. Rename our box to grid box. And here besides our sprite and our collision shape, we are also going to need a twin. So with our grid box selected, let's add a new node, which is going to be of type twin. We're going to use this twin to animate the movement of our box instead of just making it jump to the position that it should be. Let's remove the script from our grid box and save it by pressing Ctrl S and going into the grid box folder and clicking on save. Now with our scene complete, we can add a new script to our grid box. You can leave everything as default and click on create. We're going to extend from our box class and here we are going to need a reference to our twin. We're also going to export a variable that's going to control how long it's going to take for our box to move from one position to another. We're going to call it sliding time and I'm going to initialize it with a value of 0.3. And here we're going to need two variables. One is a reference to our tile map that's going to be passed to us later on. And a boolean that's going to control whether we are sliding or not. This way we don't try to initiate a new movement in the case that we are already sliding. To get the reference to our tile map, we are going to create a function that's going to be called from our tile map. It's going to be called initialize. And here we are going to receive a tile map. And the function type is going to be void. When we receive this tile map, we're going to set our variable called tile map to be equal to the one that we just received. And right after doing so, we're going to make sure that our position is snapped to the grid. In case that when we place our box inside of our map, it is offsetted, so we make sure that we are already snapped to the grid, so we don't run into any weird behaviors. So we're going to set our position to be equal to a return value of a function that we're going to create later, which is going to be called calculate destination. And here we are going to pass as an argument the direction, and in this case the direction is going to be as vector2 with a value of 0. And we can already create this function down here. Just so Godot doesn't complain to us while we are coding. Here we're going to receive a direction, which is going to be a vector2. And we're going to return from the function a vector2, which is going to be the new position. For now, we can just return a new vector2. And let's go back to where we were before. All right, so as you probably remember from our previous episode, every box that we create has to implement the push function that we created on our box script. With our grid box, this is not going to be different. So let's define this function. As always, we're going to receive a velocity here, which is going to be a vector2, and we're going to return nothing. All right, so here, the first thing that we're going to do is check if we are already sliding, and if that's the case, we're going to return from the function. If we are not already sliding, then we're going to have to calculate a destination. So we're going to start this destination into a variable called move2, it's going to be equal to the return value of our calculate destination. And here, instead of passing the velocity, we're actually going to pass the normalized value of our velocity. This way, we're only getting the direction in which we want to move. This function is going to return to us a vector2 with a global position in which we want to move to. But before doing so, we have to check if we can move to that destination, because maybe that destination is inside of a wall or on top of another box that we already have inside of our map. So before moving our box, we are going to first check if we can move. And again, this is going to be a function that we're going to create in a minute. And we're going to pass to it the value that we just calculated and start in the variable move to. So in the case that we can move, then we are going to configure our twin and move our box. For now, I'm going to pass here. And once again, we're going to create this function down here, just so Godot does not complain that we don't have that function. Move to is going to be a vector two. And we are going to return a boolean. And for now, we can just return false. Now back to our push function. In the case that we can move, we are going to configure our twin. So we're going to reach out to our twin. 
and we're going to interpolate that property. The object is going to be ourselves. And here I'm going to go to a new line just so our code looks cleaner to read. The property is going to be our global position. The initial value is also going to be our global position. The final value is going to be the global position that we calculated before, in this case, the move to. The duration of this twin is going to be our sliding time. And for the transition type and our easing functions, we are going to use transcubic and ease out. You can change both of these values if you want to. And now we can close this function. Now that we have configured our twin, we are going to start it. And we're going to set our sliding variable to true. And then we are going to yield our function until our twin has been completed. And after it's done, we are going to set sliding to false. All right, now we've taken care of moving our box. So what we have to do is finish our calculate destination and also our can move functions. To calculate our destination, we're going to first start our tile map position in a variable that we're going to call tile map position. It is going to be equal to tile map. And we're going to use the function world to map, which is going to take a position in the world and convert it to a position inside of our tile map. So just so you can better understand what this is doing, I'm going to go back to our game scene and select our level. And in sum, what we are doing is taking any position, any global position, for instance, this position right here, and we are converting it to a tile map position, which in this case is going to be one in the X and zero on the Y. The position right down here would be one in the X and one for the Y and so on and so forth. So what this means is that any position inside of this square is going to be converted to a vector two, which has one for both X and Y. This way we know where we want to go inside of our grid map. And then once we have this position, we're going to convert it back to a global position. This way we have a position that is stuck to our grid. Now let's go back to our script. So now that we know what world map is doing, we are going to pass to it our global position. And this is going to return to us that position that I just talked about. And we're going to add to it the direction, which if you remember is a normalized vector two. So in the case that we are moving to the right, if we calculated a map position here, that is for instance, three and four, and we are moving to the right, this means that this new tile map position is going to be four in the X and four in the Y. And now that we know where we want to move in our grid map, we are going to convert this grid map position into a word position so we can move our grid box correctly. And here, instead of returning an empty vector two, we are once again going to reach out to our tile map and call map to world and we're going to pass to it the tile map position that we just calculated. And finally, to know if we can move to a position, we are going to use the test move function of our kinematic body, which expects a transform and a linear velocity to test the movement. But if you look closely, we don't have any linear velocity. All of what we are doing is just calculating a new position and then moving it with our twin. So what we're going to do is create a new transform based on the transform that we have and then set its position to the position that we want to move to. And for the linear velocity, we're going to pass to it an empty vector two. This way, we're just checking if when we are in that position, we're going to have a collision happening. Let's begin by creating our future transform. And this is going to be equal to a transform 2D based on our transform. And the origin of this future transform is going to be equal to the move to, and we're going to return not test move, and we're going to pass to it our future transform, and the relative velocity is going to be an empty vector two. As test move is going to return to us a value of true in case we are going to collide with something, if we want to test if we can move, we're going to return the inverse value that this function is returning to us. Now our grid box is almost complete. Let's just go back to the beginning of our script. And here we're going to give this script a class name. It's going to be grid box and we can save our script. Now let's go back to our 2D view and select our level. And here we're going to attach a new script to it. And we are going to save it inside of our world folder. And we're going to leave it with the default name of level. And we can click on create. As we saw previously, we need a reference to our tile map inside of our grid box. So on our ready function, of our level, we are going to loop through all of our children. And for each one of them, we're going to check if they are a grid box. And if that's the case, 
we are going to call the initialize function that we created before and pass to it ourselves. Now let's go back to our 2D view and with our level selected, we're going to add a new child to it, which is going to be our grid box and we can place it somewhere around here. Now let's test our game. And as soon as we touch our box, it's going to move accordingly. Now you notice that we have a bug here where the box is jumping inside of our wall. And that is because even though we believe that our box is correctly placed in our grid, that is not the case. What happens is that when we are calculating our map position to our world position, and let me go back to the 2D view and select our level, you'd think that the position that is being given back to us is right in the center of this tile, but that's not the case. The position calculated is right at the top left corner of this tile. And because the origin of our grid box is right in the center, when we are doing our calculations because of this difference of the position that the tile map is giving us and the origin position of our grid box, we run into these weird issues that we just saw here. So to fix that, we're going to go back to our grid box scene and we're going to select our sprite. And here on the offset, we are going to uncheck center. This way the origin of our scene stays right on the top left corner of our sprite, just like what we have inside of our tile maps. And now we have to move our collision shape to match the position of our sprite. And because we know the size of our sprite, we can just set this manually to 32 by 32. All right, now we can save our scene. And if we go back to our game, you can see that the origin of our grid box scene is now different than it was before. And now if we once again test our game, you can see that the issue that we had before is not happening anymore. And now before we end this video, I would just like to showcase one thing to you and that is what would happen if we didn't have that initialization inside of our grid box. By the way, you don't have to follow this along, I'm just going to show to you. So I'm going to open our grid box script and here on the initialize function, we are setting ourselves to the closest position to us instead of the grid. So I'm going to comment this line and play the game once again. Now our box has not been set inside of our grid and it is in the same position that we set it when we instantiated it inside of our level. And what you notice that is going to happen is that as soon as I try to move the box, it's going to move diagonally. And that is because the box was not in a correct position inside of our tile map, or in other words, it wasn't snapped to our grid. And as soon as we try to move it, depending on the direction and the position that the box is, the next position based on the position that we were before is going to be diagonally to it. So that's the reason why we have this line inside of our initialize function. This way, when we start the game, all of our boxes are going to be snapped to our grid. So let's uncomment it. And now our game is going to behave as it should be. And also, as you probably have already guessed, even though we have a different box here, which is not our physics box, if we move it on top of our platform, it's going to work correctly. So that's it. We now have a complete prototype that we can then build upon to create a game. By the way, keep in mind that even though we showcase two boxes here, you usually are only going to see one or the other inside of these types of game. So choose whichever that you think suits best your game. You can also totally finish this game by adding content to it and adding a game loop. So if you'd like to add a menu to it, an end game menu and whatnot, we have several UI tutorials here in the channel. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. As always, this project is available on GitHub and you'll find a link to it in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.